Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy President. And, uh, I rise to speak on the T-Lab bills as well. Uh, I'll first uh, focus on Schedule 2 and the sustainability standards. Now, having uh, spent many uh, hours preparing financial statements, the last thing we need to be worried about is trying to measure uh, impacts and sustainability and all those fluffy things that are very hard to actually quantify. As an accountant, financial standards should all be, you know, financial reports should be just that. They should be about the finances of a company. Uh, and rather than have a lot of words, if you actually read a, financial, uh, a set of financial reports today, it's more like reading War and Peace uh, and next to no information on the actual internal workings of the company. And, and by that, I mean there's not enough management account uh, accounting information in there. Uh, so I, I am, am, you know, would vote against this, all of this bill just on the basis of Schedule 2. Uh, and I will call out the hypocrisy of Labor. I mean, you know, I've said this a few times now, but we had 40 different models to calculate net zero, uh, and the CSIRO is not prepared to say, you know, you know, uh, acknowledge the risks and benefits of the model that we use versus the other 39 models out there, and whether or not there's any regulatory arbitrage between countries on that. They don't, you know, for example, include phytoplankton. I mean, just last week we spent the entire week talking about. Uh, some sort of legislation that's going to actually look at putting carbon dioxide into the bottom of the ocean, uh, whilst we completely ignore phytoplankton in our ocean, which absorbs 70 per cent of CO2. But despite the fact that the bureaucrats don't want to be held to account on the way they measure carbon dioxide, you're talking about bringing in legislation that seeks to hold private sector uh, to account on their sustainability practices and how they're going to deal with climate change, measure CO2 emissions, etc., etc. Uh, so it's a bit rich for the government to be asking the private sector be, to be measuring uh, all, all of their impacts on the environment, whilst at the same time not being held to account on how they calculate net zero. Uh, but I'll move to the other sections of, of, uh, of the bill. Uh, personally, uh, if it wasn't a broken promise, I'd actually probably support Schedule 4, uh, but it is a broken promise. The Labor Party said that they weren't going to touch franking. Uh, and they are now touching franking. Uh, now, the reason why I would actually support Schedule 4 is, is that what happens is big uh, Australian companies who have large uh, foreign ownership holdings, uh, those frank dividends uh, aren't distributed when they pay dividends uh, offshore, so that franking credits accumulate in the franking accounts. And what happens every you know, five or six years or every decade is, is that uh, BHP will do a share buyback or a capital raising and, and effectively redistribute or stream those dividends um, out uh, into uh, you know, domestic shareholders. But the problem I have with that is that franking in itself is nothing but one great big paper shuffle. Now, there's been reports over the years, and I've followed this closely uh, throughout my time uh, in my finance career. Uh, is that the real net company tax rate is somewhere, depending on what you read, somewhere between 13 and 17 per cent. Because what we're seeing over time is the superannuation funds get bigger. Uh, they are, have a lot, much larger shareholding uh, of our uh, AXX 200 blue chip companies. So what that means is, is when they pay out dividends to super funds, the, the franking credits then get refunded. So overall, companies are paying less and less tax, and we're seeing that as well with uh, charities and everything like that. What we really should do, but, but in the means of you know, collecting and distributing the dividends, so what happens is a company will pay its tax, say, in May one year, uh, and that'll get, you know, there's an enormous amount of paperwork in calculating that tax, uh, doing the accounting on all the franking credits, maintaining those franking credit accounts. And then about eight months later, when the individuals go and lodge their tax returns, they get the money refunded to them. So about, you know, if it's something like, you know, let's take halfway between 13 and 17 per cent, let's say it's 15 per cent. What that means is that half the company tax that gets collected in Australia, which I haven't looked in a while, but I think it's pushing close to $100 billion, $50 billion of that just gets refunded or recycled back out. So if you really wanted to actually reform the tax system, uh, and I'll qualify all of this by saying whatever you do with the tax system, you've always got to cut income tax first and make sure that the, the rate of income tax uh, for the average wage is always lower than the company tax rate. Uh Authorised G. Rennick, LNP Chermside.